There's a world of change we need to understand. There are emerging methods, technical, scientific, analytic, to help us understand that world. Spatial analysis is one of the oldest methods humans have had for making sense of their surroundings. What makes it different today is the marriage of age-old spatial thinking with contemporary computational technologies. This is your chance to learn how to integrate your own spatial reasoning with the latest geospatial technologies, to discover new knowledge, to communicate what you have learned via geographic visualizations, and to understand the science behind spatial analysis. This semester, the Empirical Mathematical Reasoning section of General Education unveils a new course, Mapping Our World. My name is Peter Bowl. Kirk Goldsberry and I are going to teach this course. What we're going to do first, now, is to offer you several vignettes of the sorts of things you'll be learning. This fall, America will choose a president. The simple fact is people in different places have different viewpoints. This makes election mapping a fascinating exercise. The spatial structure of American voting returns will determine who will be president this time next year. This semester, as we watch our presidential election unfold, we explore and visualize the underlying spatial structures of the American electorate. We will examine voting patterns everywhere in the U.S. We will expose familiar political patterns and reveal strange anomalies. We will evaluate the redistricting process. In October, we will use spatial analysis to investigate patterns within social media to help us predict the big results in November. We also use spatial analysis to model interactions between nature and human society. In March 2011, there was an earthquake off the coast of Japan. It resulted in a terrible tsunami, a series of great waves that hit the northeastern coast. The tsunami also inundated the number one nuclear power plant at Fukushima, resulting in a nuclear meltdown and the evacuation of the surrounding area. The environmental and political consequences of this series of disasters will affect Japan for years to come. Japan's nuclear plants had become its major source of electrical power and their locations are all along the coast. Now, this would seem rather strange. Much of Japan is an earthquake zone, but perhaps not. If you look at this map again, you'll see that the nuclear power plants are in the least earthquake-prone locations. Moreover, the Fukushima plant was located in an area that historically had little experience of earthquake and little, almost no experience of tsunami. But this tsunami was different. It was very large and extended far down the northeastern coast. The initial evacuation zone was defined by arbitrarily drawing a circle around the power plant. However, it soon became clear that prevailing winds were carrying the radiation to the north and a new zone was added. But the difference between these two zones illustrates the importance of making spatial decisions based on real data. But sometimes we can plan ahead. We can know with certainty what the consequences will be, and we can then decide whether we should plan for it or not. In this animation, we see sea levels rising through the Gulf Coast. Using remote sensing data, we can predict exactly where the land will be lost. Well, this animation goes well beyond what we shall see in our lifetimes. Social media is perhaps the most noteworthy innovation of the last decade. This has been evident in everything from the Arab Spring to the London Olympics. Outlets such as Facebook and Twitter enable billions of people to express their feelings and exchange ideas as never before. We can use spatial analysis and visualization of social media to reveal unprecedented insights about what ideas are prevailing in different parts of the world. Using emerging geospatial technologies, students in our course will analyze and map millions of daily tweets as a means to uncover profound new knowledge about our world. Distance and location are fundamental to spatial analysis, but so is scale. Consider this representation of China's economy. The scale here is set at the provincial level. That is, the data is aggregated up from lower levels to the province level. We see the story that everyone knows. Rich provinces are on the eastern coast. Now look at the same data at a county scale. It's clear that a provincial scale is quite misleading. But how do we account for this spatial distribution? In both cases, 
we have treated territorial units as the framework of analysis. But do we have an alternative? Consider this. What you're seeing now is a nightlight photo of southern China. This suggests a very different way of thinking about China. Speaking of scale, it's important to point out that spatial analysis and mapping can yield insights at several different scales. This year I used these approaches to study basketball. More specifically, I mapped out the spatial tendencies of every player and team in the NBA. The results not only confirm that different players have different strengths and weaknesses, they also reveal for the first time exactly where each player excels and where each player struggles. For example, LeBron James has increased his value by becoming much more active closer to the basket where he's very effective, at the same time reducing his activity behind the three-point line where he's less effective. Spatial analyses can not only unveil these kinds of revelations, but they also enable people to communicate about them in profound ways. This semester, you're going to learn a lot about how to think about the world in new ways, how to reason about the world in new ways, how to formalize problems in new ways, how to analyze the world in new ways, and perhaps most importantly, how to communicate about your world in new ways. Regardless of your studying public health, uh, history, the environment, almost any topic, spatial analysis will help you communicate about your expertise. It'll help you uncover new things that you didn't know before. So the goal of this course this semester is to make sure the Harvard student body has a chance to learn these new skills, to become experts with spatial analysis, and to learn how to communicate about the world in new ways.